Hey friends and welcome back to Stronger Every Day. My name's Chrissy. It's great to see you all. Welcome back or welcome if you're new. Today we are going to talk about John um, 15, 18. I'm not going to read the verse um, because I don't have a ton of time in editing and I, I don't like to show me reading it that like looking down. Um, so today I'm not going to read the verse but you can look it up. It's John 15, 18. It's basically talking about the pers persecution. And persecution is nothing new. If you've read any portion of your Bible, you see that God, that Jesus was persecuted left, right, and sideways from every angle. They actively sought to kill him and did kill him. He understands what we're going through. And as people with depression, anxiety, any of the over 200 different mental illnesses, you understand that not only are you persecuted because you're a Christian, but then you're doubly persecuted because you're a Christian who struggles with mental illness. Um, that's one of the purposes of this channel is to, is to get the stigma gone. I think if you surveyed a, a thousand person church and it was anonymous and there was no way possible that anybody could tell who, who checked yes or no. And it was asked, do you have any problems with depression, anxiety, um, any kind of struggles that you're going through that more than half would say yes. I can sit and listen to people that we go to church with talk with us and I can tell you she's struggling. He's struggling. I can tell you people at work that um, come in, I, you can just see it all over them that they're struggling. Yet if you ask them, their answer is going to be no. Especially if they're a Christian, their answer is going to be, oh no, praise the Lord. Everything's great. Life is wonderful. Jesus loves us. Everything is wonderful. Meanwhile, on the way to work, they were deciding whether or not they were going to drive their car in a ditch. Um, stop. Stop the stigma crap that, that Christians don't suffer. We've talked about statistics before that over 70%, I believe it was, of pastors have admitted, have admitted. So that's 30% that I wonder, you know, I'm sure some haven't, but I still wonder if the statistics higher that have struggled actively with depression and anxiety as a pastor of their church. Um, just trying to deal with all of life's issues. And I think we we think that our pastors just float around on clouds, right? And they have little angels just swoop in and take care of everything. The bills, woof, angel took care of it. The laundry, poof, angel took care of it. The car broke down, angel took care of it. Groceries, angels got it. You know, no, they go through the same things that we do. More so because everybody wants their pastor's time, right? Everybody wants to come and have him pray, have, have, have your pastor pray for you. Have your pastor come see you in the hospital. Have your pastor marry you, bury you, all of the things. And so they know so much more than just the general um, people that go to church. But we still put them on this pedestal. It's knowing that God understands, right? Even if society doesn't, even if the world we live in doesn't, uh, a lot of people didn't understand Jesus. <laughs> I've talked about, there's a video, I'll try to link it uh, above, that talks about some of the people of the Bible that struggled. Job, Moses, David, um, Paul, Jesus. And I'm not saying that Jesus necessarily struggled with depression, but it had to be very discouraging when different things happened. And there's even, um, Jesus wept. I mean, there's even times of sadness. Now, was he depressed? But he certainly understands what you're going through. So, I don't think it was particularly lovely when he was beaten, spit on, hit, had a crown of thorns shoved down into his head, had his back lashed open with a whip, had to carry a cross, um, had nails in his wrist and, and ankles. I don't think that was fun for him. I think he was probably, you know, he asked God three times, to, to not make this happen, but yet nonetheless, your will be done. So I don't know that he was jumping through roses, you know. I, I've talked in detail about different people of the Bible that struggled. It's nothing new. It's something that's been going on all along. But what's happened is Christianity has decided what's right and proper. And that's why we have so many religions. That's why we have so many sub-religions of those religions. Uh, God has one religion. <laughs> it's, 
it's not all these sub, but we can't agree on, on little things. Do you eat meat? Do you not eat meat? Do you eat certain meat? Do you not eat certain meat? Do you wear dresses? Do you not wear dresses? Are women allowed to preach or women not allowed to preach? Um, you know, are, it, are you supposed to be baptized or are you not supposed to be baptized? Do we believe in, um, the, the million of other different things that, that have differentiate, differentiate, you know what I'm trying to say. I can't say that word. Religion. That's when people say, what religion are you? I'm like, why is that important? I'm a child of God, if that's what you're asking. Um, I love God. God loves me. I'm his daughter. He's my father. Is that what you're asking? Do I have a relationship with him? Or do you want to know what religion I am? So, so you can then see, are we going to get along? Right? Is that your point in asking that? Or are you going to try to make me believe what you believe? And, and no. Like, I believe what I believe. And that's that, that God is the only way. Um, he's the way, the truth, the light. That he, he died and rose again. That he loves me. That he died for my sins. And my sins are clear. That when, when I leave this earth, I'm going to see him. Um, that's what I believe. It, it doesn't matter what religion I am. We are not the same religion as a lot of our family. Um, we still love them. They still love us, right? A lot of my friends are, aren't Christian. And, and I, to an extent, I don't blame them for not wanting to be a Christian because I think that means you're, you're a religion. And um, I've said before, I don't think Christians necessarily are hypocrites. I think they're human. Now, there are hypocrites out there. But am I a perfect, is Chrissy a perfect example every single day of how it sh how my life should be? No. Um, flat out honest. How, was I even pre two years ago, even though I had a relationship with God, was I the perfect example? No. <laughs> um, I've said before I would be embarrassed if there was like a little, a little um, scrolling monitor back here that has told you all of the horrible things that I have done in my lifetime. It would be embarrassing. I think most people would be embarrassed if they had a monitor back behind them. I'm not telling you to be like me. Don't be like me. Be like God. Understand that he knows what we went through. He knows what we went through, what we're going through, and what we're going to go through. He understands being persecuted. He understands for, for sticking sticking to what you believe, sticking hard to what you know is right, and being persecuted anyway, people mocking you, talking behind your back, actively seeking to destroy you. Now, maybe today they're not actively seeking to kill us, even though a lot of places are actively seeking to kill Christians. But maybe for you and I, say in, in Tennessee, or in Texas, or in Florida, or in Montana, maybe it's that we're at, actively seeking to destroy our character to oh well, she's a nut job she's crazy you know don't listen to her she you know you know what she did when she was 12 well what what did you do when you were 12 <laughs> like I've never understood that either that we compare someone's let's say age 30 to the way they were when they were 15 I'm not that person anymore I'm not the person I was two years ago um I say this, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I used to be. We, we, we want everyone to give us grace. Well, I've changed. I'm a, I'm a better person now. But when you see someone you went to high school with, it's like, oh, well, I know all about her. No, you don't. You knew, you knew about that girl when she was in high school. You don't know anything about her now. When was the last time you even spent a, a five-minute conversation with her? Um... It's being persecuted left, right, and sideways. I think it's extremely hard as Christians with depression, um, with any kind of mental illness, especially in churches today. Um, I think some churches have it right, and but yet many have it wrong. Um, I think they, they view it as a lack of faith, that if you were only stronger in your relationship with God, and I'm not going to deny that that helps. That helps. It helps to be strong in your relationship with God. It helps to have a solid foundation so that when the devil puts all his crap in your mind or when a tragedy happens, when you lose a, a kid, when you lose a spouse, when you lose a job, when you, when you have a wreck, when you're in the hospital, when bad things happen, it helps to have that solid foundation to stand on. I'm not denying that. But what I'm saying is, is that I wouldn't be here today in 2024 if not for God. Because the things that I, I have done and tried would have already taken my life many times over. God is the only reason I'm here. God and God alone. And 
it's not for my lack of faith in him now i have a lack of faith a lot of times in myself but what i've what i'm learning to realize is god is in me right and so it's time to represent him in a better better light than i ever have he doesn't need me but i want to draw people closer to him i certainly don't want to be the reason someone someone falls away from him so this one's going to be a little shorter i just wanted you to understand that god understands what you're going through it's not only the millions and millions and millions of people who struggle with mental illness god understands it too um I think that helps a little bit. No, it doesn't make it, it doesn't just, you know, you just don't click your fingers and everything's fine. But I think it helps to understand that even Jesus knew what persecution felt like. He is our example of how to handle it. He gives us beautiful ways of, of showing us um, his love on a daily basis and just knowing that we're his children, right? God, the most high, loves you. He knows your name. He knows everything about you. He knows all the hairs on your head, all the tears you've ever cried. He knows every single thing about you, past, present, and future. He knows you're gonna make mistakes. He knows sometimes you're gonna make humdinger mistakes, right? He still loves you. I've used this example. If, you, if you've told your kid, don't throw the ball outside towards the window, don't throw the ball outside towards the window, don't throw the ball outside towards the window and they throw the ball and break the window do you no longer love your kid no you don't love the fact that they just broke the window that you told them three times not to do but you still love your kid that's your kid that's god that that's a very watered down version of god's love for for us right um i try to find practical examples that make sense in my mind to hopefully help them make sense in yours realizing that i can't you know make that connection with everybody but but knowing that my heart is too friends i end every video this way it is always my heart and hope that you feel this god loves you i love you your friends your family love you and we need you here we'll see you in the next one friends bye